Hi kids, my name is Bani McPartan and this is The Fearless Five and it is a story about five friends that go on a big adventure um, with the view to saving a life. So I'm going to join in on chapter five and it's called The Den. The day after the boxing match, all the boys were in the den when I got there and Charlie. It really bothered me. She had no business being there. What's she doing here? I asked as rudely as I could. I didn't care. The den was ours, a girl-free zone. There used to be a sign up on the door that said no girls allowed, but it fell off in a storm and blew away. I really miss that sign. I invited her, Johnny J said, and he gave me that stern look that said back off. So I did. I didn't need the distraction anyway. I had a plan to deliver. Everyone sat down and I stood at the front of the room. So I've been thinking, I started to say, don't burst a blood vessel, Walker said, and the others laughed, even Charlie, the neck of her, laughing at me in our boys only den. I flushed red, but I wasn't gonna be discouraged, so I pushed on. We need to rob Roland's garage. Excuse me, Walker said. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. To be fair, when I said it out loud, it did sound mad. The Ireland-Egypt match is on on the 17th. That's three days from now. Every man, woman and child in this country is going to be glued to the telly. That included the coppers. I knew for a fact that Jim Rowland's granny is going to be lo looking after the garage that day and so the Rowland men can go down the pub. They were all dumbfounded. I knew they were dumbfounded because all their mouths were wide open. A piece of spam fell out of Sumo's. You want to rob a granny? Walker said, pushing his glasses up his nose and looking around for someone else anyone at all to say something. No one spoke. I think they were all in shock. I'm pretty sure she'll sleep through it, I said with great confidence. Why? Charlie asked. Because that's what grannies do, I said. I mean, why are we robbing Rollins? Johnny J cast his eyes to the floor. He couldn't look at anyone, even me. Because we can't hang around here anymore. We need to get Johnny J's mam to America fast, I said. And Sumo, Walker and Charlie stared at Johnny J. He covered his ears with his hands and placed his face in his lap, the way he used to do when we were kids and he didn't want to play anymore. Oh, Charlie said. Oh, Walker said. Okay, Ro Sumo said, we'll rob Rollins. He shrugged as he said it. Walker looked outraged. What, have you lost your minds? He shouted at Sumo. But Sumo just shook his head from side to side. It's Johnny J's mam, Walker. She's sick. There has to be something else we can do, Walker said. Good, great, I'm all for that. And when you come up with a better idea, let us know. In the meantime, we're robbing Jim Rowland's granny, I shouted. I didn't mean to shout. It was all very stressful. Walker stood up and started to pace the floor, over and back like a demented, caged animal. What are you doing, Charlie asked. I'm thinking, he growled. And then he coughed and he spluttered and all of a sudden he couldn't catch his breath. So he pulled out an inhaler out of his pocket and sucked on it hard. Sit down, I said. He sat down and put his head between his legs. Sumo raised his hand. Yes, Sumo. You said Ro Jim Rowland's granny would probably be asleep. What if she's not asleep, he asked. Good question, Sumo, I said. And he nodded happily. Do you remember when my mom went to New York, I asked. Do we what? You talked about it for six months. Look at me cool American sweatshirt. Look at me cool American jeans, Walker said between deep breaths. I ignored him. Well, she brought back some pepper spray. It's totally illegal. But she figured that Rachel might need it to protect herself from madmen when she went to nursing school. Pepper spray? The stuff that blinds people, Walker said, clearly alarmed. It only temporarily blinds people. It also causes difficulty breathing, a runny nose and coughing. They were all staring at me like I was nuts. It only lasts about half an hour, I said, trying to redeem myself. You want to use pepper spray on a granny? Sumo said. No, of course not. We'll just threaten her with it. Ah, uh, I don't know. That's not on. She could have a heart attack, Sumo said. She'll be grand, I said. She probably won't know what it is, Charlie said. And I wasn't sure if she was being helpful or not, so I just scowled at her. Maybe I could just put her in a headlock, Sumo offered. We all ignored him. That was a stupid idea. Johnny J took his hands away from his ears and raised his head. How much do you think we'd get? Enough to get your mum to America, that's for sure, I said. And he nodded thoughtfully.
got the nickname Banny from my best pal, who is called Valerie, but I call her Hal. So I call her Hal and she calls me Ban or Banny. And her kids, as a result, all call me Banny. So since they were born, they've called me Banny. In fact, one of her kids gave out to another friend of ours once when she dared to call me Anna. Robin said, her name is Banny and went mental. <laughs> So that is how I got to be Banny. And the name kind of spread into my own family. And now all the kids in my own family call me Banny. So when I decided to write for kids, I thought the only name I could possibly write under was Banny. So that's why I'm called Banny. That's a really hard question to answer. And the truth is that I love both of them. I especially love writing for kids because it's really good fun. And the best part of writing for kids is actually afterwards when you're reading for kids and you get to interact with kids and see how they enjoy the book and have the crack with them. So that's why I particularly like writing for kids, but I do like writing for adults too. Would you like to meet my dogs? Okay, I'm gonna bring you around to meet my dogs. So, come on over here, this baby is Miss Doris. Say hi, Doris. Come on, Doris. Say hello. Sit up and say hello. See, I'm pushing her and pushing her. She's quite lazy. <laughs> she's quite a lazy girl. That's Doris, and she's a poggle. She's half pug and half beagle, and she is a sweetheart. You can go now, Doris. <laughs> now, who's next? We go over here, and we find Miss Trudy. Now, let me pick Trudy. Trudy is my oldest girl. She is 16 years of age and she is my baby girl. I love her so, so much. She's very gentle and very old <laughs> and mommy loves her. And where is Clem? Let's find Clem. Clem! Oh, this is Clem. Come on, Clem. Come on over and say hello. So Clem is my little boy and he is uh, what is he? He's a Shiba Inu, which is a Japanese type dog. And he is just the sweetest boy in Ireland. He's very shy. And he's kind of new to us. We only have him about six months. And we love him, don't we? Now, I do have another little girl, but she's in hiding next door. She's very old and she likes to rest. So I'm going to leave her. So I hope you enjoyed meeting my dogs. Bye!